Uh, welcome. I think I'll just wait a, a few more seconds before we get started to make sure that we've uh, given people time to connect. I can see we've already got 400 uh, people have joined us and it's growing very quickly. Uh, so thanks everyone. Um, yeah, thank you very much for uh, joining us today, uh, especially because we haven't given you uh, very much notice, but uh, it's it's really encouraging and pleasing to see uh, so many people, uh, you know, really keen to engage in this uh, very exciting, you know, new process um, that will make a really big difference to the future of the NDIS. So um, with that being said, I'll, um, I'll, I think we've, uh, yeah, we should be good to go now. So thank you. And, um, and before we really do get started, I would like to acknowledge um, that I am um, on the lands of the Ngunnawal people uh, today here in Canberra. Um, and in the spirit of recognition, uh, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. And I'd also like to uh, pay respects to elders past and present and extend that to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are uh, with us here virtually today. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge all of the people with disability, uh, family members and uh, supporters who have worked really, really hard over very many years and decades um, to bring us to this exact moment in time. Um, we're, you know, almost 10 years in and um, and this review is going to give us a really uh, important and, um, you know, it, it's, it's just a really important moment. Um, and as you'll hear this afternoon, um, it it won't work and it cannot happen without all of you. So thank you. Um, before we get uh, into it much more, I just wanted to let everybody know that we have um, two Auslan interpreters here with us today. And, um, and for those of you watching online, you should see that we have um, one at a time pinned to the screen. Uh, so that they're visible at all times, but they will take it in turns so that they get to have a rest. And I also need to remind myself not to speak too quickly and also uh, for our other speakers to not speak too quickly because it's hard work, uh, Auslan interpreting. Um, we also have uh, captioners. Uh, so if you would like to have captions open. There are two options. There should be a button in the bottom left corner of your screen that says CC, uh, and that will open them up and you can change the appearance of them. Uh, but we also have the link in the uh, Q&A section, which is a bit like chat, which allows you to open the captions up in a separate browser window. Um, and if you have any tech or accessibility problems, please use that uh, Q&A function similar to chat. And um, and the good uh, people here who are helping with this at the NDIS review team with the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet will uh, do what they can to help you out. Um, so hopefully I have covered all of the housekeeping. Um, so the purpose of uh, today is to put as many uh, people with disability, family members, workers, advocates, uh, stakeholders um, in the same virtual space as the uh, Minister for the NDIS and the new NDIS review um, chairs and panel um, and as well as the people involved behind the scenes. Um, so that they can explain things uh, to all of you and so that you can ask them questions and find out more. And this is, um, we're really pleased that, uh, we, you know, that every Australian Council has been uh, invited to uh, help 
with this part, this very first step, uh, it, it's um, it's a demonstration, I think, of a sincere commitment to make sure that people with disability and families and supporters are genuine partners in this um, in this review. So, um, if uh, if you haven't already, we, there's a uh, there has been a, a form on the Every Australian Council website where we have received um, questions and comments from um, uh, very many people in our community, also on social media. But we are also inviting you to use the question and answer function in this WebEx um, to uh, send through your questions, and we'll do our best uh, this afternoon to get through. Uh, as many as we can um, from the pre-submitted questions, but also the questions that are coming through from you now. And don't worry um, that once you put your question in, you won't be able to see it in the same way that you can in a Zoom, but um, it will it will be uh, visible to those of us behind the scenes. So please don't let that discourage you. Um, but that's probably enough for me, I think. Um, I think you're all keen to hear from um, our new-ish uh, Minister for the NDIS, uh, Minister Bill Shorten. So uh, over to you, Minister. Thank you, Jean. Uh, let me just say to everyone that I am uh, really excited about the process of change that we're on. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that and then hand over to the chairs and the panellists and answer questions. But first of all, I'd just like to acknowledge that wherever we are, we meet on Aboriginal land, and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I also want to thank everyone who's made the effort to be here. Uh, and I know I got one email saying that we need to be on Zoom as well as WebEx. We'll make sure that we do everything we possibly can to engage people. So thanks to Frank who sent me that message this morning. Um, well. It's 10 years on almost since the foundation of the NDIS in their first uh, trial areas. Uh, the scheme was due to be reviewed at the 10 year mark. As part of our election policies before the last election, we said we'd bring forward that review. And that's really what's triggered today's session or discussion. I won't try and summarize 10 years in, in 10 seconds. Suffice to say that for some people, for many people hopefully, the development of the scheme has been a, a positive proposition and experience. And at the very least, the fact that with so much unmet need has emerged in the last nine plus years shows the need for this scheme. But there have been too many negative experiences in my opinion. Too much red tape, too much uh, where the NDIS participating in it and doing the forms becomes like a second full-time job. There was the terribly uh, shocking proposal by my predecessors in government to uh, introduce just rampant, unfair uh, cuts to the scheme and uh, cuts to people's packages and the vehicle, the Trojan horse of independent assessments. So there have been lots of negatives as well and we want to rebuild trust. Part of rebuilding trust we've already started to do in the last three plus months. Uh, we've got a new chair of the scheme, first person with lived experience, with disability, Kurt Fernley, a remarkable Australian uh, we've got a new CEO of the scheme, Rebecca Falkingham. Uh, we've got new board members. What we're also doing is we're tackling some of the hard issues, uh, getting people, people with disability who are stuck uh, in hospitals even though they're eligible for discharge because the system hasn't been quick enough to try and help out their plans and hopes and dreams. We're also tackling the legacy court cases, all those people who've had to go to the AAT many of whom for decisions which really they should never have had to go to court to get there to maintain what they had. So we're tackling those legacy cases. But part of rebuilding trust isn't just that. Part of rebuilding trust has also been making sure that we passed on the payments, the increased payments for our disability support workers in the, um, uh, the beginning of July with the price increases to the NDIS. Because we know the scheme can't survive without making sure that the people who work in it are appropriately and fairly remunerated. So we've been doing a fair bit, but this review is another step towards us rebuilding trust. This review is um, incredibly important. 
you see even in the business media today and yesterday uh, a lot of uh, discussion about the scheme and its sustainability but sometimes by people who don't look they perhaps look at the scheme through too narrow a lens we want to use the review to change how we view the scheme of course we want to stop waste and stupidity and and uh, you know inappropriate invoicing and all of that and I think we can and should but what we want to do is change the view of the scheme from being uh, a series of line items to viewing it as an investment I groan every time I get asked in the media about cost when they never ask about benefits and it's a legitimate discussion to make sure taxpayer money is being used appropriately and no one disagrees with that but I think we also need to use this review to look at how we use the scheme to invest in people and uh, that will be an important part of what's motivating me. Now with the review I just want to say to people who've gone, oh my lord, not another review, you know, we've submitted to this and we've been consulted on that and nothing ever happens and what, you know, we know what needs to be done, why do you need to review it? I just want to say to people who might have those views that if we're not starting from scratch. It's not a blank sheet of paper. I uh, and the government appreciate that a lot of the solutions have already been identified, they just haven't been acted on. And so we want to look at what's been done in the past. That should also mean for people who want to contribute to the review that you don't have to uh, write lengthy, Bible-length uh, submissions. And, and you know, it's, I don't want people to have fatigue about it. I want them to have a sense of uh, positivity. But not only is that an important part of the review, but I think the most fundamental point, part of the review is co-design. I think too much of what's happened in disability in recent years has been the re-emergence of, for want of a better term, paternalism. We will do things to people, not with people, uh, and not allow people to be empowered to make decisions. The whole spirit of the scheme is about uh, empowering people, giving them agency in their own lives. The whole point of the scheme is to provide hope and to look at the outcomes that people want, the right to an ordinary life, for example. So co-design is a fundamental part of this uh, review process and no doubt we'll talk more about what that means. So we've got 12 months, but obviously there's things which we know that, we, that, that are known by the disability community and the disability world now. And where the review and myself and the state ministers see consensus emerge, we don't have to wait 12 months to change some of the things which really frustrate people in the scheme. Um, there'll be a massive engagement process, uh, and I'll let others doing the review talk more about it. But in summary, this is how we get the scheme back on track. This is how we deal with the challenges of you know the, the growth trajectory. But fundamentally, it's about reorienting how we run the scheme to being a co-designed scheme, uh, an optimistic experience for participants, where we focus on investing in people to give them their best outcomes in life. So, Jean, um, you know, I thank you for what you're doing. I look forward to the collaboration. Together, we can make this the best scheme in the world. We're certainly not at that point yet, but this is something we do together. And uh, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm pretty excited. Thanks, Minister. I'm um, I'm excited too. I I um it's it's a relief to hear um, many of the things that uh, both yourself and uh, members of the review team have been saying. I think um, you know particularly that um, you know people don't have to tell their whole stories all over again. But um, I will. Um, I will not say too much more and, and let the panel members uh, speak for themselves um, directly to you about it. Um, so um, just before that, for anybody who missed it, um, this review was announced uh, by the Minister on Tuesday this week um, and um, basically it, it's an independent panel as uh, a group for uh, lack of a better word, um, of uh, it has two co-chairs. We've got uh, Professor Bruce Bonahady, who many of you will be familiar with, um, as the inaugural chair of the uh, NDIA and one of the original architects of the scheme, um, and uh, Ms Lisa Paul, um, who some of you will 
not know very well, but you will soon. Um, and we've got five other panel members. Um, uh, Miss Judy Brewer, um, Dr. Stephen King, who unfortunately can't be with us here today uh, for personal reasons. Um, Mr. Kevin Cox, who I think maybe we don't have online. Um, and uh, and a couple of very familiar faces, I imagine, especially to the Every Australian Cows community, uh, Doogie Heard um, and Kirsten Dean, now excellent former campaign director. So welcome to you all. And um, thank you very much for being here and um, being ready to hear from people and um, hopefully get to say something too. But um, for now, I would like to introduce uh, uh, co-chair, um, Ms. Uh, Lisa Hall. Um, over to you, Lisa. Oh, thank you very much, Jean. And um, I just wanted to say, Jean, that uh, this, this occasion, this webinar through Every Australian Counts is actually the first kind of formal gig we've done as a review panel. So that just goes to show, you know, that we really, really, really want people with a disability and their carers and families to be the centre of the review. Um, so I do feel really honoured that the Minister has asked me to co-chair this review. Um, you know, he's been a champion of people with disability for longer than I can remember. And I feel really quite humbled <laughs> to work with you, Bruce. <laughs> um, because without Bruce, the scheme wouldn't even exist. And uh, as the first chair of the agency, you know, I think you can take a lot of pride in a lot of the early achievements. Um, but we do know that the scheme needs to improve. Um, so the review will uh, make people with disability, their carers and families, the centre of the review. Um, you know, this, this amazing panel, and they know, like you do, what needs to change in the NDIS because they've been saying so for years and years and years. So like the Minister said, we will not be reinventing the wheel. Um, we will look carefully at everything that's been said before and everything you've said before and, and then build on that with you. Um, so we, you know, we hope that by working with you, um, we can make the scheme simpler, fairer, more predictable. You know, I, I, I really hope in my heart that we can um, get the scheme to a point where a person with a disability or their parent or carer can have absolute confidence that everything will be absolutely fine when the carer or parent is, not, is no longer around. Um, and I'd love us dearly to rebuild trust in the scheme and confidence and pride, uh, not just, you know, not just amongst participants, but for all Australians. Um, now we are going to work, we've committed to work closely with people who are poorly served by the scheme. So we're going to work really closely, for example, with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and their representative organisations. Um, and with people whose first language isn't English and their organisations, um, and also work closely with rural and regional and remote communities. Um, and we want to get back to the original intent of the scheme, which is about independence, you know, whether that means getting the supports that the scheme offers or getting a job or getting accommodation. You know, we, we want to focus on what outcomes the scheme uh, is getting as well. Um, and, and we actually want to sit down with uh, workers in the scheme and their employers because, you know, let's face it, they need to be responsible for services that are safe, um, services that are consistent and appropriate and, and affordable. So we do feel a great sense of responsibility, don't we? And um, <laughs> I'll, hand over, I'll hand over to you, Bruce. <laughs> Or oh, maybe I'm handing back to Jean. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's thanks, Lisa. Thank you so much, and that's that's fine. I'm very happy for uh, us to jump over to Bruce now. Um, thanks, Bruce. Yeah, thank you, Jean. And can I just say how delighted I am to be here today 
with you. You are the group of people who have been at the forefront in recent years of defending the NDIS. And now what I hope is that you will be at the forefront of people who are going to help us ensure that the scheme lives up to its original intent. So you'll make the shift from playing defence <laughs> to playing offence, you know, so we can make this scheme the best disability scheme in the world. We really want to know your thoughts, your ideas about what's going to work, what has worked in the past, what hasn't worked in the past, but, a set, but most importantly, what's going to work for the future. So Lisa and I are in Perth today because we're going to attend the Disability Reform Minister's meeting that's uh, being held tomorrow. And we've begun today in exactly the way we're going to continue, which is we have been meeting with the disability community and particularly people with disability uh, here in Perth because we want to know from them what issues they've faced and their ideas about uh, what uh, needs to happen now to ensure that the scheme delivers uh, for all people with disability. How we reach out to those people who haven't been heard in those remote communities, those people with very complex support needs, people with intellectual disability, people with communication challenges. We really need to design the scheme for some of for the people with the most complex needs, because I think if we design for the most complex, not in all cases, but in many cases, though the we will also find the solutions for those with long, with less complex support needs. I'm delighted to be working with Lisa, um, with the expert panel, with the secretariat that's based in the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. We're all committed to ensuring that this review really achieves great impact. But ultimately, what we can do is, is limited. This review needs to belong to you, just as the scheme belongs to the people with disability and the Australian community, this review also belongs to you. We're going to look at all of the issues that you've been telling us about, particularly in relation to the participant experience, the participant journey, and how we can move to a more relational um, relationship between the NDIA and people, participants uh, and their families. How we can put people with disability back into the centre of the scheme. We're also going to look at the supports available for people who are not NDIS participants because, um, as many of you know, the NDIS today is an oasis uh, in the desert. We're also going to look at the scheme sustainability. But as the Minister has said, we want to shift the debate to one which focuses on the scheme as an investment scheme, as an insurance scheme, and one which builds and contributes to great outcomes for participants, that supports their social uh, and economic participation and helps them to build uh, independence. We're going to look at the interfaces with mainstream services, and we know these are issues that you've raised in, in relation to previous reviews. So we've got an enormous amount of information about what's not working. We're going to address those issues, but we've also got an enormous amount of data and evidence, and that's on what that's what we're going to build the review on. We're in a far better position than we were a decade ago when the scheme began, when we had none of this information. So let's use that information together to build the best disability system in the world. So back to you, Jean, and I am really looking forward to your questions and being part of this discussion, not just today, but over the whole of the next 12 months. Thanks, Jane. Thank you, Bruce. I, um, I, um, hope that helps uh, give people uh, hearing about this for the first time uh, some hope in the same way that it's given me some hope. I know that, uh, you know, everyone has just had a really utterly awful uh, few years 
um, and and it, it you know it's it's going to be uh, it's going to take a big leap of faith from people in our community to dare to feel hopeful again. Um, but I personally feel confident uh, that this uh, review um, is is going to get us there. Um, so thank you uh, for sharing all of that. Um, uh, I'm I'm going to uh, give Doogie a couple of minutes uh, to uh, share with us. Um, hey Doogie, uh, nice to see you. Um, if you wouldn't mind just yeah telling us how you feel about uh, being part of this panel and um, and what you uh, hope it can do. Uh, so over to you Doogie. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dougie Heard. Um, uh, first of all, I'm super happy to be with everyone here online. Super, super happy. Um, I'm in Canberra, so I want to pay my respects to the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples on whose land I'm sitting. Um, I want to thank Minister Shorten for asking me uh, to contribute to the review panel and its work. Uh, to say thank um, how much I'm Looking forward to working with Bruce, Lisa and my fellow panel members and also how much I'm looking forward to working with all of you because um, I gather there's hundreds of us on this um, big meeting today. Um, what am I trying to do here? Um, well, I think it's like the Every Australian Counts campaign says. Um, it's our NDIS, so let's make it work. But here's a true thought that I have. Um, that's a very scary thought, um, and it's it's an enormous responsibility. And and to be honest, all I can think of is this: don't screw it up, Doogie. Do not screw it up. Um, except if I'm being honest, the word I really thought of starts with an F. For goodness sake, Doogie, don't screw it up. Um, so um, the only way I know to contribute to this panel and to not screw it up and make a mess of it is to do this sort of stuff. Together, we review this mega billion dollar, 500,000 person national disability insurance scheme in all of our mix, beauty and diversity of humanity. We do it honestly. Uh, frankly, respectfully, we all say what we believe to help get back on track the NDIS or in some areas to get it on track for the very first time. I think this is going to be really hard and I also think a year isn't very long, although it seems like a long time. But if we get it right, and, and for me, what what I mean when I say get it right is we put people with disability genuinely, the, genuinely at the centre of decision making with real choice and greater control over their reasonable and necessary supports that are funded in a sustainable way by the whole Australian community investing in everyone's future. If we get all that right, this period of review will be hugely rewarding. I think that to get it right, every single voice needs to be heard. All the communities of Australia, in all of their diversity, need to speak to one another about our different experiences. All points of view, even those I disagree with, perhaps especially those I disagree with, need to be heard and my job as a review member is to sit and listen and whoever I am, you are, participant, carer, family member, trade union member working for an organisation like I'm the chief executive officer of, provider, advocacy organisation, we all need to join in this big conversation. Why? Um, because I think we want to get things right. As people have said, the NDIS is a really good idea, 
It was what it was set up. Um, it now supports over half a million people. And my guess is if you're joining this um, webinar today, you fundamentally support the idea of the NDIS. You may, like me, have an NDIS plan. You may, like me, be a provider of NDIS registered services. But my guess is you also believe that there's tons of room for improvement and that we can make this NDIS better and that we can do that together. Why do I care about all of this? Well, some people might think it's because I've got a vested interest. I'm an NDIS registered provider. I worked for the National Disability Insurance Agency over 10 years ago to help set up and launch the National Disability Insurance Scheme. But my vested interest is super, super personal. 40 years ago, I went swimming with my, my mates in Scotland. I broke my neck in three places. I've used a wheelchair ever since, and the one I'm sitting in here today was funded by the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Every single day of the last 40 years of my life, a human being has come into my house, helped me to shower, helped me to get dressed, get into my wheelchair, with the purpose of getting, helping me to get on with my life. My vested interest in all of this is that I am an NDIS participant and the quality of my life depends on the quality of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. It has to be the best scheme it can be. And I think you can repeat different versions of my story 500,000 times in all their different ways. So I think if we cooperate, if we work together, share ideas, if we agree furiously and disagree respectfully, if we look for solutions, and as the minister said at the upfront, and then we implement those solutions, because we all know what they are, I think then we'll succeed. I think that's what this review is about. Better lives. Your life, because I, I so your life because you're all here, and my life because I'm selfish. I want a good life. That's the only reason I'm here today, and I'm grateful to be given the opportunity. I hope I'm part of building a better future. I want to work with everyone who's here, and I want to thank Eugene and the Every Australian Counts campaign for helping all of us to get us to this point today. Thank you, Doogie. Very well said. Uh, um, I um, I'm 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 a bit lost for words, aren't I? Um, I think we will get started now with uh, questions from um, uh, from people who are not us. Um, so we've we've kind of got a. Uh, we've got a handful which are sort of mashups of questions that we received a lot of uh, very similar versions uh, in the Every Australian Counts website before today and also like, you know, up to a couple of hours ago. Um, and and there's uh, many, many excellent questions coming through in the chat as well. Um, so I have uh, some people helping me work out uh, which questions to ask and um, I will start with this one for the minister um, which um, is a is quite a common one that we got a lot so uh, Minister Shorten um, what what can you say to people about like why is this review different than any other sort of inquiry about the NDIS um, and um, and being run out of, uh, so the uh, review team are supported by staff from uh, Secretariat's port, is the fancy way of saying it, uh, from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. Um, and uh, one person asked us, being run out of Prime Minister and Cabinet means to me that you were looking 
uh, to cut costs or cost savings. Um, so that one's for you, Minister. All right, thanks, Jean. Um, and can I just thank Doogie? You always, you, whenever you talk, I feel like storming the barricades. Then I realise we're in government now, so I've got to just have a cup of tea. Um, listen, the reason why the review secretariat is being run out of prime minister and cabinet isn't a bad one; it's a good one. First of all, look who else could do it. We could have run it out of the NDIA and the Department of Social Services, but that's a bit like being asked to mark your own homework, isn't it? So it's got to be independent of that. If it had been run out of the Productivity Commission, uh, people, I think plenty of people in the sector when I consulted them said that would have looked like a cost-cutting exercise. So by a process of elimination, the beauty of the Prime Minister's, uh, uh, the, that department, is that when you do reviews, then you've got to explain to the central government agencies like Prime Ministers and Treasurers what the review means. So that invariably builds in delay. It means that some good ideas just by the process of attrition get burned off the, you know, the proposals. Whereas if we've got the central government people involved with ourselves from the get-go, it means you don't have to say everything twice. And it means that there's a lot better chance that the process of the review educates other people. Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, a lot of people don't know about disability. A lot of people don't know about the NDIS. And when they do talk about the NDIS, it's just in terms of, you know, a perceived cost. So if you like, the review educates people who need to know better what they need to know. So it's very strategic. And, you know, all of the people who, I mean, there'll be people in this, in this webinar, most of you will know at least one of the panelists or indeed not more of us, we're interested, what unites this panel, in my opinion, and myself and all of you, is we just want the best for the scheme. We're not interested in, you know, other interests. We want the very best for the scheme. So that's why we're doing it there. The other thing is states and territories have got a crucial role to play here. We all know uh, that uh, not everyone's going to be on the NDIS. It wasn't designed to have everyone. but. We need to make sure that states and territories don't uh, skimp on their responsibilities to a national disability strategy and to services outside the NDIS. So they're involved in all of this too. I, I remember what it was like to build the first NDIS and it was building a coalition, not just the people who were most committed, but educating other people to come with us. So. The structure of this review is a, is a key part of where it's based, is part of that educative process for everyone else to realise how good the NDIS can be. Thanks, Minister. I'm sure that was helpful. I didn't really understand myself uh, much about how important the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet is in this process too. Um, so. Um, as always, uh, we're running a bit short on time, um, so I will stop uh, not going on too much. Uh, this next question is uh, is a word for word one that we got, but also was repeated a lot. Um, so, question is, do we really need a year long review? I say no. We just need human beings to take back this organisation, uh, meaning NDIA, I assume. So uh, let's give that one to Lisa. Uh, what do you think, Lisa? Fabulous question, for starters. Um, look, a year seems like a long time, and then it seems, on the other hand to us, it seems like a short time. And the reason it seems like a short time is that if, if, if we came out and just said, this needs to happen, that needs to happen, this needs to happen, you know, just do this, do, here's the solutions, then we could take less time. But what we actually want to do is say, and this is how things should be done. Like the how things get implemented is so important. Um, and we actually want to talk about that. And that makes a difference to all of you who are on this today, you know, how things are done. And actually it's, it is to the um, question's point about kind of putting humans back in charge. And you talked about relational. 
Um, the other thing too, though, is that we're not going to wait. You know, this, as the minister said, we're not going to do this review like other reviews. So we're not going to sit in a darkened room <laughs> for a year thinking deep thoughts and then come out with a 2,000-page report that gets put on a shelf. Um, nor are we going to do all the right things and come out with an actually really good report with lots of sensible recommendations but then, that then get ignored, you know, because they don't have... They're not implementable, they're not easy to work or whatever. So, and then besides all that, we've already committed to putting you at the centre. So the review is going to be done differently um, and and probably that process means it'll take longer too and that's just the way it is. Um, and that's a good thing. And then the other thing is if, if we can see, and the Minister's put this in the terms of reference, if we can see things that are you know, that could be done sort of now, well, then we'll say it, you know. And if if disability ministers and Minister Shorten accept that, um, then it'll happen within that year. So please be assured that if, if we can come to stuff that's, that's quicker, we'll do it. Thanks, Jean. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Um, this next one is... Uh, Good one and very common. Um, and I'll give it to you, Kirsten. How will people be able to have their say in this review? How can we assure that we will be heard, uh, in, including how will we be able to provide a written submission? Thanks, Jean. Um, and so lovely to be with um, everyone this afternoon. Awesome question. Um, and it's kind of already been answered by a couple of people this afternoon, which is this is not going to be your bog standard government review. Um, and my sincere apologies to all of the lovely public servants um, that are on the call today, but we are not going to do this the way that other reviews have been done. Um, and the first way that you'll be able to have your say is by doing absolutely nothing at all. Um, and as you've already heard this afternoon, what we're going to do to start off is we are going to look at um, all of the submissions that people have made to the various inquiries and consultations over the last few years. If you think about things like the Tune Review, the various inquiries that the Joint Standing Committee have done, the consultations around independent assessments, um, even some of the evidence that's been given directly to the Royal Commission, we're going to have a look um, at all of that. Um, we might even have a look at some of those um, submissions that that pesky group EAC made over the years to the various inquiries and consultations. So we're going to look at all of that um, and then we're going to come back to you and say, did we get it right? Have we missed anything? Did we hear um, what you had to say? We're going to say things like, what's changed since you last you know, um, had you say, like, are there other things that we need to consider? Um, so we're going to ask those kinds of questions. Um, uh, and then we're going to come to you and say, OK, given that we know all of this, what are the solutions? We're going to be really solutions focused. We've spent an awful lot of time in the last few years talking about um, what the problems are. Actually, what we want to know from everybody who's on this call, everybody in the AAC community and all of the 500,000 participants and their families and the organisations that support you, support you is what's going to work on the ground. If this is the problem, what is going to work for you? So that is the what we're going to do. But just as important um, and perhaps most important to me is the how we're going to do it. And we're still, honestly, still working that out. There will be standard ways to have you say, written submissions and things like that. But we know that that really doesn't work for everyone. Um, and so we want to have multiple ways for people to be able to engage with the review, have their say and make sure that they um, have their voices heard. So there isn't going to be one way. There's going to be lots of ways. Um, and in part, the reason we haven't locked everything down by now is actually want to hear from you. How do you want this to work? What processes would work for you? How do you want to be able to have your say and contribute to the kind of solutions that, that we need? Um, and in particular, we really want to make sure that we hear from people that you don't usually hear from when you hold government reviews. 
really want to hear from people who don't usually turn up to, you know, all of those workshops and round tables that we've all been to with the butcher's paper and the sticky notes. We know that doesn't work for lots of people. And so we really want to get do some hard thinking and talk to you about how do we talk to people who don't usually participate in these processes so that they have their voices heard. Um, and then the last thing that I want to say is that this review has a really, really, really big job to do. Um, and if it was just up to the panel, that would not be um, a good thing. It's not um, the job of the panel to work these things out. I think it's our job and my job to work with you um, to get the, the, um, the recommendations that the review makes right. Th this will only work if we all work together. Um, I've been an enormous privilege uh, um, spot in the last few years to see what awesome things that the disability community can do when it comes together and sets its mind on creating change. Um, I've seen what we've been able to do and unfortunately in the last couple of years a lot of that time has been spent pushing back on things that we didn't think uh, would work. What we've got an amazing an awesome opportunity at the moment is to turn that around and go, well, what will work and how can we all work together to build it? So that's what I'm most excited about. Um, I really encourage, um, Jean will give everybody some details, I am sure, at the end of the webinar about how you can sign up for updates so you can um, get involved. But I really encourage like, like Doogie, like Bruce, and like Lisa, really encourage you to get involved and have your say because the only way this is gonna work is if we all work together. Thank you, Kirsten. That's good stuff to hear. And it sounds a bit familiar, some of it too, which is awesome. Um, uh, following on from that, uh, just quickly, if you don't mind, Bruce, because we're very quickly running out of time. Um, for people who have uh, uh, already contributed to many other reviews, um, and Kirsten did kind of answer it, how can I share with you uh, what I'd like to contribute to this review. Oh, sorry. That's that one's for you, Bruce. Apologies. I've... To you, Bruce. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what I'd like to contribute. Sorry, Jean. The question was, what what I'd like to contribute to the review. If um, yeah, for people who've uh, I'll. I have provided my views previously uh, to other reviews and inquiries. How can I make sure that you get that? Uh, those previous. Oh, how do you? How can so if I'm someone who's oh. contributed before, how, how can I make sure that you will see that? And you know, I think yeah. So, so we're going to. Um, sorry, uh, my hearing these days is not as good as it used to be. Um, so look, look, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go through all the submissions that people have made to the tune review, to the Joint Standing Committee, um, to the NDIA, to the Royal Commission, to make sure that we've heard what you've heard, what you've said, and then build the review uh, on that. I just want to pick up also the fact that, about the structure of this review. I think it's enormously significant that as an expert panel, we're reporting directly to ministers. And so we'll be able to take our findings directly to the decision makers. And then, because when I look at what's happened in the past and the gaps that have opened up between what you've said and what's been done, it's often been because those views have not been taken directly to the decision makers and then implemented through the NDIA and through the National uh, NDIA's Quality and Safeguards Commission. So I think there's a whole lot of things here that we're trying to set up to make sure that this review is highly impactful, really does make a difference and really does reflect what people want. I think it's also important to recognise that the you know, the, the challenges with the NDIS have not developed overnight. And in that, and they won't, not all of them are going to be solved overnight. So the year is actually quite important to us so that we can get to some of those more 
challenging problems, those some of those more deeply entrenched issues, and start to design and with you solutions that are going to work. In some cases, it'll also give an op us an opportunity to trial some of those solutions. So I think it's an exciting time. I'm just humbled by the fact that I've had, I'm now going to get an opportunity to work with Lisa and others to, and with you above all, to try and work out the solutions to these problems. So back to you, Jess. Thank you, Bruce. And, um, and to everybody tuning in or who has submitted a question in advance, I uh, sincerely apologise. We are rapidly running out of time again. Uh, there's so many excellent things being said. Um, so I will um, do what I can to try and make sure that we can do more things like this. Um, so just for now, I think we might have time for one or two more questions. Um, so uh, this one I'll give to you, Judy, because we haven't given you any time yet. Um, how will this review uh, change how uh, current um, systems are working in like the planning process? Um, you know, we've heard very many things about that over the years, but especially sort of right now, um, to make sure that like uh, support is really truly individualised for uh, all sorts of different people. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. And I'll try to keep it short because I'm watching that time too. Uh, so the question is, how will this review overhaul the planning process? Well, I can't ask, answer the how because but I can tell you it will, it will. So get rid of the how because you're going to tell us how it's going to overhaul the planning process. And we're going to go through what you've told us before and we're going to listen and we're going to work no, out yes. how, how to overhaul the planning process. What I can tell you is we will. And um, as someone whose son was diagnosed with autism over 25 years ago and who is an NDIS, my son is an NDIS participant, I go through that planning process uh, I get a little bit sick of the uh, having to educate the planners every time I go in. Uh, I get sick of saying, well, I've brought my file, um, here it is, and they ask for something I haven't got in the file. And I say, well, you know, can I bring the filing cabinet as well? Um, and then they still ask for something else. Uh, so I get it. And autism, our son, he has complex um, a life, as we all are. We're all complex individuals. And that's the word. He's an individual and he needs an individual plan and he needs someone to understand him and his needs. So I'm looking forward to your contributions on, on the planning process because I think that's really central to our work. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. Um, I will, uh, I'll go back to uh, Kirsten. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, um, Will the review look at all the complaints people have made about the scheme? I guess that might depend, um, Jean, to be honest, on whether you mean, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't see the question, whether it's um, the complaints that people made against stream through all the various inquiries and consultations and um, like reviews that have been done, or whether you specifically may mean the complaints that have gone into the NDIA. Um, and so that's a really good question, actually. It's something that the, the panel members um, might be able to ask uh, the NDIA to provide us some information that I just as um, I'd just be concerned about privacy. Um, and so I would just think about, we might have to think about how we can get that information in a way that protects people's privacy. I'm sure that there must be a way to do it. But I reckon it's a really good question because the, where the complaints have come in will tell us about some of the problems. So it's a really awesome idea. Um, and it is just proving why we want uh, to talk to you guys and work with you guys because this is the kind of information that we get. It's awesome. So um, can I take that one on notice and the panel will work out how we could get that information um, uh, from from the NDIA without yeah, making sure we respect everybody's privacy. Thanks, Kirsten. Um, I will, um, and can I just say, I shouldn't editorialise, but I'm, I'm really happy to hear when um, 
there aren't solid answers to things yet because um, it means uh, that there's flexibility in this process, which I think is a good thing. Um, do you, um, I, you know, how do you feel about, um, you know, family members who are um, providing a lot of support for uh, people with disability who maybe um, really need some help from people close to them to be involved in this process? So, uh, you know, are they uh, able to be involved, Doogie? And if so, how? Doogie, yeah, sorry, I, I, I have Judy. I thought, oh, well, there you go. Um, I think we need to do everything to help. So everyone knows me or everyone who does know me, I talk too much, right? Um, and, and it just never ends. But there's a power relationship between a service system and, uh, and people with disability. And, and many people with disability need um, informal and formal supports to help them articulate a case, to feel confident about having a conversation. And what I want us to be able to do is to ensure that people with disability feel whenever they engage with us or the agency or the commission, whoever it might be, that they will have with them trusted supporters and advocates, whether they are formal and informal, both at an individual and a systemic level, who can articulate with them, support them to express their point of view and have whatever it is they have to say in whatever way they choose or are able to say it, understood, received and acted upon. Um, and that's really, really difficult, I think, because we have a history that says, oh, well, you know, the guys in the wheelchairs, they can do all these things that they're supposed to be able to do and they say them and that's fine. And yeah, we all get on with it. And, you know, apparently we've got no problems in lives, in our lives. But that's not the case for everybody that we want to hear from and involved in this process. Um, when I had my accident a million years ago um, in Edinburgh, there were no such things as individual or systemic advocacy organisations. So we made them ourselves. I'm, a, I'm an unapologetic supporter of an advocate for advocacy organisations that will speak up with bravery and courage exactly to get the message across for the people that they represent. And all of those voices need to be there, including um, uh, the, the formal funded organisations, but also the peer support and family supports that are around the individuals who've got something to say. And we need to make sure we've got processes going on in all kinds of places, in all kinds of ways, to allow those different voices to be heard so that we can get this right. Because, you know, it is difficult and challenging, but it's not rocket science. It, it's about treating human beings like human beings and then saying, OK, well, let's fix that. Thanks, Doogie. And my apologies, everyone. We've already gone a minute over time. Um, but before we wrap up, if people can stick around for an extra few minutes, I would like to um, ask the Minister to make a few uh, comments after hearing some of the questions from all of you. Thank you. Over to you, Minister. In a lot happening on the chat room. I'm wrapped with the uh, level of engagement. I'm sure it's only going to increase from here. I, um, I just want to say thank you to everybody. I, I, will, I am absolutely committed to the NDIS. Uh, I know change is confronting. Uh, I know that people need to see where they are placed as a result of change. And I know that it needs to be done through co-design and empowerment. If, if, if when the panel or we do something initially, people say, hey, they've got to think of this or that, don't get angry, just let us know. We're all in this together. I know everyone here is equally committed to making the NDIS the best it can be. So we're all on the same side and I really want to just do everything I can in my power 
along with this marvellous new leadership team we're building in the agency, this marvellous panel, and most importantly, people with disability and the people who love them. We will get this right and we'll just get on with it. Thanks, Minister. Um, and uh, speaking of, um, you know, saying things to the review team, um, there's a couple of different uh, ways for all of you to do that. Uh, it's it's all sort of uh, in the process of being built. Um, so for now, I would encourage people to go to the uh, review's website, and that is uh, NDIS Review. Uh, uh, e v i e w if you're anything like me and can never remember dot uh, gov dot au uh, and you can sign up for updates there um, but also as usual um, if people feel more comfortable uh, having a buffer between themselves and the government or for any other reason um, uh, every Australian council will continue to uh, ask uh, for your feedback and help provide it back to the review team for you um, and um, and you can do that right now using the form that we set up a few days ago to send any questions just write whatever you want in there um, and we'll keep you updated with other things in future but feel free to go back to that so that's um, available from the home page at everyaustraliancounts.com.au um, Thank you all very much uh, for your time, everybody. Um, uh, I hope that we can do uh, many more things like this in the future. Um, but for now, I will uh, let everyone go. Um, uh, yes, but thank you very much.